In this video, we want to consider the divergence of a vector product and prove that it is equal to this expression. And remember how it works for the uh, divergence. Say we have a vector A expressed like this, and our del operator is expressed like this. Then if we take the dot product of this dot vector A, that will give us the partial of a1 with respect to x1, as we have written right here, plus the partial of a2 with respect to x2, written right here, plus for this dot this, the partial of a3 with respect to x3. Or we can write this out, abbreviated like this, partial i AI. And remember from our previous video, video number 14, that this, that is an abbreviation for partial of something with respect to XI. That is what this symbol means. So Using this symbol, we can express the divergence of a product like this. And here we have a double index, so we sum over that index to give us 1, 2, and 3. So in component form, the divergence of a vector can be expressed like this. Now here we have the divergence of a vector. The vector is a cross product. But in component form, this would be written like this then. We would have, say, partial of i, and then we would have u cross v ith component, just like we did right here del dot a is written like this, only a now is replaced, vector a is replaced with this cross product. And remember now how we can write this. This could be expressed as using the permutation symbol epsilon u v, and we want an ith component, so we could have it like this, say j, k, i, and this would have a label j, and this would have an index k. And again, we've done this now in many videos, so we're not explaining this in the same detail as what we did in our earlier videos. So this we can express as partial i epsilon j k i and then here we have u v u j u j v k j k j k these match. Now, epsilon jki, that is the same as epsilon ijk. That's an even permutation. So we can express this as epsilon ijk. And we can bring this inside. So we'd have it like this, and we'll make it a little bit neater. We will have epsilon, and then we will have i, j, k, partial of i, then we have u, j, v, k, like this. So here we're taking 
the partial derivative of a product of scalars, uj, vk. So let's consider then how we're going to handle this. So we have i, j, k, partial i, partial, the partial of i in the scalar uj times the scalar vk, ijk. So this then would be epsilon. We'll just, leave ep we'll just leave that alone for right now. We'll get back to the indexes. Then we will have this times the derivative of this, where that stays constant. So we'll have, write it like this, taking this derivative, and that stays constant. Then we have plus, we'll have an epsilon here. Now we'll take the derivative of this. So we'll have i b k u j, like this. Now here we had epsilon i j k, and this would be i j k. Now notice epsilon i j k, this is minus epsilon i k j. Because here we shifted the k over to here, that's a permutation of one, that's an odd number, that gives it a negative sign. And we do that because here we have i, k, j. So here, this plus is going to be minus, and we have epsilon i, k, j. So now these indexes match each other. Now, let's see what these mean. Here we have Remember now from video number 14, we went over this. If we have del cross a, say it's the ith component of that, in epsilon permutation form, that would be epsilon, partial j, partial k. And this is an ith component, so notice that here it is j, k, i i being the ith component. Here we have partial i u j. So this right here, that would be del cross u. And this would be i, j, the missing letter is k, that would be the kth component of that cross product. So we have this times v, k. Then we have minus, and in the same way as what we did right here with the same kind of pattern, this would be del cross v i k now the missing letter is j so that would be the jth component of that just like here we have j k the missing letter is i so this expression is the ith component of del cross a completely analogous to what we did in the previous video, times uj. And this, 
as component form for a dot product. Vector V dot del cross U. Minus, again, this is the component form of a dot product. Vector U, make this a better U, times, or take the, not times, but dot product of del cross V. Again, hopefully you remember now, or hopefully you recognize by now, component form of a dot product, V dot, this vector, del cross U, this is vector U, and here, component form of another dot product, vector U dot del cross V. So we have V dot del cross U minus U dot del cross V. And this came from, this whole thing was derived from right up here where this is the component form of that divergence. So what we have shown then is that this divergence equals this, which is what we have written right here. So that's the proof. So that's it for this video. Again, we just want to give a demonstration of when you have the divergence of a cross product, how it can be written out like this. Okay, um, we'll try to have a couple more examples here of working with these um, vector identity problems. And the, uh, the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org.